back to, to the Sweetest Solvers. So my name is Sinclair and this is my sweet mate Lisa. And we are running a series in which we discuss murder mysteries and conspiracies and try to get to the bottom of what really happened. In this week's episode, we're going to discuss the Lady of the Dunes, the name of an unidentified victim found in the Race Point Dunes in Provincetown, Massachusetts on July 26, 1974. On July 26, 1974, during a walk, a 12-year-old girl and her family stumbled upon the decomposing body of a woman in Grace Point and Dunes in Provincetown, Massachusetts. The insect-ridden remains were, fo were found a few yards from the street along with a pair of footprints about 50 yards from the scene. The woman was found laying face down on half a beach blanket with no sign of struggle. A blue bandana along with a pair of Wrangler jeans were under her head. She sported a long red or auburn hair, pulled into a ponytail, and pink painted toenails. She was nearly decapitated from possible strangulation. One side of her head had been crushed, possibly from a military type entrenching tool, and a missing both hands and one forearm, along with multiple teeth that were from a expensive, very expensive dental work uh, described as New York style by dentists. There were also signs of sexual assault, likely post-mortem. She bougie. Yes. The extremities of the remains led investigators to believe that the killer was trying to hide the victim's identity or their own. It was determined that she was approximately 5'6", weighed 146 pounds with an athletic build, and could have been between 20 and 49 years old. She was finally buried on October of 1974 after the case went cold, only for her body to be exhumed three times in 1980, 2000, and 2013. But the suspect still remains a mystery today. At the scene of the crime, the sand and beach blanket did not seem to be disturbed. This could suggest that the body was possibly moved to that specific spot where her body was found. The only other evidence at the crime scene were jeans, bandana, blanket, and a hair tie. Over thousands of missing person cases were analyzed along with a list of approved vehicles driven through the area. However, no matches were found to this particular case. Since 1979, the Lady of the Dunes has had two facial reconstructions made after her and her body has been exhumed several other times for further analysis. In 1987, a Canadian woman told a friend that she saw her father strangle a woman in Massachusetts around 1972 but the police failed to locate the other woman. Another woman told police the reconstruction of the victim looked like her sister who disappeared in Boston of 1974, but the DNA did not match the case. There was also a possibility that she was an escaped convict because she shared a resemblance to Rory Jean Kessinger, who broke out of jail in 1973, only a year prior to the body being found. However, her mother's DNA also showed no relation to the Lady of the Dunes. There was a local serial killer at the time, Tony Costa, who was suspected of the case, but they ruled him out because he had actually committed suicide a few months later. And then that case got all blown up because they thought that was a murder, but no, I think it was just a suicide. Mm -hmm. And then there was another serial killer um, among this time, living in prison in the Massachusetts area. And he confessed to the crime, but he wouldn't give the woman's name because police started beating him. Which is like, if you want an answer, don't beat it out of somebody. Yeah. SpongeBob, you gotta ask him a question first. Oh yeah, what color is my underwear? Um, and yeah, he's like sent a map. He sent a drawing of the map where the body was found to his friend, mm -hmm. along with like a drawing of like a dead woman, which is like, how are you still close with your friend after that? Yeah, um, the person that they beat up, his, his, the, what he quoted was dumb funny, but apparently what they were looking for is in his grandfather's garden. I don't want to be yeah, a bird. I think it was talking about marijuana. Yeah. He was growing marijuana. What was, his name was like Clark something. Haddon Clark. Clark Haddon. But he had paranoid schizophrenia name. that, you know. Oh, that goes. It, it's likely he just gave a, a false yeah. confession. They just ruled him out because he was crazy. Yeah. But isn't that crazy? And then the director of Jaws, his son, read a book about like all of the unsolved crimes in the area. And he was like, oh, that sounds like this background character from the scene in Jaws. Like, and it was how some do you random lady some with random a bandana girl on. With a bandana and like, okay, 
now you're just saying all women look the same. Yeah. Because there's no way. There's no way that you just get murdered after being like a extra in yeah, the back. Yeah, imagine like you sign up. No, no, really. I was about to say. But anyway, <laughs> um, imagine signing up to be an extra and then <laughs> you're in the woods now. Like, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, you're in a movie about like a man eating shark and then you just get killed by a person instead yeah. of the shark. And where was the shark in all of this? I don't know if it's because most of the mysteries that we cover like in the 70s and whatnot but why are those people so crazy it's like Bro, serial people killer in after the 70s killer. were just murdering everybody exactly and they were getting away with it too and they do too much they, they do were the doing most. the most and that's why they like said that the whole hands missing and all that missing or like just trying to all cut up chopped yeah, up but they were trying to hide that's why they thought it was tony costa at first because he's known for like chopping up people at the joints in, you know, you don't think they took it for like safe ke keeping? Safe keeping? Yeah. S kept the joints? <laughs> like the bone collector? No, like kept her teeth because her teeth were expensive. Oh yeah, I don't know about that. Maybe her dentist was mad at her or something. No. You don't deserve these teeth. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's scary. That's why I will never get veneers. Yeah. Also, that looks like ouch. Crazy. That is crazy. Who do you think did it? Um. I really don't know. It could have been Tony Costa. Oh, they said also Whitey Bulger. Whitey Bulger? He was, he was known for moving his victim's teeth. Oh. My knee is kneeing right now. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> it's hard to solve this crime because there was no, like... There was no DNA detection at the time, and then... Yeah. They just keep digging up the body. It also putting seemed it back, like... Digging up the body, putting it back. <laughs> it also seemed like in the 70s, they were like, just, you know, I don't even care anymore. Like, they didn't even like try. It they was were like, all hopped up on drugs. Yeah. But anyway. It was probably the drugs that um, did it at this point. Yeah. Drugs made somebody kill somebody and move the body. Yeah. So that was one mystery solved. Join us next time when we solve our next crime.